Alrighty. Welcome back. Sorry we had a um, little technical issue the first time, but I think we should be good now. Welcome to today's show. So we have a um, we have a cool cool little surprise today. We're streaming from the Dragon Gym. Master Sam will be joining us. Um, Sam's actually the guy that got me into kettlebells. So the theme today, or what we want to be talking about, is workout efficiency. All right, so welcome everybody that's coming on. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I know, again, kind of an awkward time in the middle of the day, in the afternoon. A lot of people were just starting to come home from work. So uh, those of you tuning in, we're going to make this worth your time, I promise. So um, what we want to talk about are some cool ideas to increase workout efficiency. How to burn maximum calories in minimum time. Like I said, Sam will be joining me. He's just wrapping up a meeting. He'll be in here in a second. I'm in his office right now. Um, I'm not sitting in the master's chair, though, so don't worry about that. And then um, Sam's actually the guy that got me into kettlebells. And one of the reasons that kettlebells were so attractive to me initially is because Sam showed me how efficient they can be when working out. So Sam was my taekwondo coach, and um, I was doing a lot of sort of traditional strength training back then, a little a mix of barbells and dumbbells and things of that sort. And then he's like, hey, come over here and check out this kettlebell. And he started showing me the swing and push press and, and all these other moves. And he really convinced me that the kettlebell is an amazing tool uh, for workout efficiency. Right? So it's, it's perfect for people who um, are either very busy, right? So maybe you d can't spend all that much time in the gym for, what, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, it's a great adjunct to anybody who's doing any kind of sport or martial art right the kettlebell could be used to fill gaps in just about any way hello Chris uh, hello Steve so Steve is on there hello welcome um, because the kettlebell can be used to fill gaps in in many different ways right we can use the kettlebell to fill strength gaps we can use the kettlebell to fill endurance gaps or mobility gaps or whatever and Sam is like got the heat cranking in here I just I just got to the gym so my coat's still on but this is gonna be coming off real soon. What up Chris? How you doing man? So welcome everybody, it's just hopping on. Today we're going to be talking about how to burn maximum calories in minimum time. We're going to give you a, a bunch of cool workout ideas, but even really before we get into the specific workout ideas, we want to talk about principles, things you can do to really increase workout efficiency, right? Because as somebody who talks a lot about minimalism, we, we really want to approach exercise from this from this framework, from a minimalistic framework. And the reason being is that, ah, uh, here he comes now, hey, the little, master. Uh, little fireside chat. A little fireside chat. I did here, let me get you, get you in your seat. So we just, uh, hey guys, what's happening? All right, so, the duo is complete. Yeah, you so, like the uh, background guys, the Soji screens? So it's, uh, hey, we got some thumbs up for yeah. that. Yeah, a little oriental theme today. So, uh, sorry, we got this really, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to say the S word because then, then I don't know if Facebook is going to kiss us off. This really crappy tripod that we're trying to use, so please bear with us. Um, so let's actually do this. Let's, uh, so we're going to talk about um, workout efficiency, how to, you know, cool ideas for burning maximum calories in the middle of time. But uh, I know a lot of people are new to our Facebook Live, so um, why don't we introduce Sam first? So do, you, so do you want to talk about yourself, or do you want me to talk about you? Because I know, like, for me, you know, I love talking about myself, but I love it even more when people talk about me. The only problem is people don't usually do as good of a job as I can do myself. So yeah. where do you where do you stand? <laughs> yeah, um, I think you would probably do a better job talking about me <laughs> than I would talking about myself. Yeah. So like I said, Sam's the guy who actually got me into kettlebells way back. He was my taekwondo coach in college, and part of the reason that kettlebells were so attractive was because of what an efficient tool they are. So you know, training taekwondo and studying taekwondo under him. You know, it really showed me like, hey, here's a tool that you can really get an efficient workout with, right? We can train strength with it. We can train mobility, endurance, power, all these things that are really attractive um, to anybody who's doing practicing any kind of martial art. Um, so, like, you know, background about Sam. Um, well, he's a master in Taekwondo. All right, you take over from here and give like the brief rundown. Cause yeah, I'm I mean, it. quick, quick, like resume. Uh, I've been involved in martial arts for what up, the, Dean? the last 30 years uh, in February 
of this year will actually be my 30th year as a student of martial arts. So uh, it's been a, it's been a long, joyous road. Um, and you know, over the last 10 years, we've been working with kettlebells. We got introduced to it in like 2005, and you know, it just kind of took over. Everything is kind of the the point of our uh, strength and conditioning spear. And not to say that we don't do other stuff like body weight and uh, barbell training. Like we do a lot of barbell deadlifting, bench press for strength. Hey, what's up, Saul? Um, so, but in terms of efficiency, if we had to pick one tool to use, it would probably be the kettlebell. Yeah. So let's know what you guys are doing. If you have any questions about types of routines or workouts for any number of goals, we're going to kind of run down the gamut here of um, ways that you can. So when we talk about workout efficiency and putting together efficient workouts, I think we got to take it. Um, you know, we're talking about burning maximum calories in minimum time. That's the theme, right? So people probably have a fat loss goal if they're trying to burn the most amount of calories in the least amount of time. But if we can give you ideas here of how to do that with workouts that sort of have a shifting emphasis, right? Because you can have really great calorie burning workouts that are strength based. You can have great calorie burning workouts that are endurance based. You can even have great mobility workouts that are that burn a tremendous amount of calories. So we want to give you a, a bunch of different ideas for each. But um, well, so, you know, here, here's, I don't know how much you've maybe talked about this on another show, but the idea of regardless of the type of workout is the condition you work out in, right? So one thing that we do on a pretty consistent basis is that idea of intermittent fasting. So most of the time on, I'm on like a 16-8 protocol. I think you do something similar mm -hmm. um, depending on, uh, you know, what, what you're working on right now. So typically I will work out fasted. So what do you think about that as uh, a method in terms of getting more fat loss I mean, I out of your uh, training? What's up, Paul? Um, so clearly I love it, right? So when we're talking about, I, I think you nailed it with the idea of like, not just the condition of your workout, but what condition are you in when you work out? That's what, that's what I would consider. There's Pat McGarry, it's explosion of hearts. Um, talking about uh, force multipliers, right? So there's certain things we can do aside from working out that, that are essentially going to multiply the effects of our workout. They're going to let us great, uh, get a greater return on investment for the amount of time we put in the gym. The two obvious things for me as far as like a nutritional force multiplier would be intermittent fasting, right, which sort of compounds the positive effects of intense exercise, or even what I'm doing now, a ketogenic diet. Since I've been in ketosis, I've actually decreased my training volume, uh, but you've seen even greater results. And there's some possible theories and why that's plausible, especially with like the muscle sparing effects of ketosis and this and that. I'm just saying this has been my experience and I found that for me, ketosis has been a force multiplier. So I've been e e able to take even a more minimalistic approach to working out. Um, so yeah, I mean, just thinking about what is surrounding your workout and, and things that you can do to uh, increase the efficiency of your workout without actually touching your workout. Yeah. Um, uh, fasting is a great one, and so is um, and so is ketosis that I found. Uh, a few things come in. Let's get, let's get these. So Paul asks, can, can't beat a kettlebell complex uh, for calorie movements and strength. Hard to get anything that comes close. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about kettlebell complexes. Uh, in just a few minutes here, Paul, but you're absolutely, you're 100% on point. A complex is a, a wonderful way to increase, you kind of stole our, our first point there, so it's spoiled now, but I don't think anyone is going to be too surprised that we were going to talk about kettlebell <laughs> complexes. <laughs> hey guys, mobility workouts, please. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, thanks, Derry. Uh, Derry, yeah, for sure, man. We're going to, we're going to give you some good ideas for mobility. Any other points you want to talk about, like force multipliers, though, of things we can do that may not involve actually tweaking our workout, but... So we talked about fasting and, and ketosis as two potential. Yeah, I, th I think those are the, the big ones. Um, probably post-workout nutrition is also going to be an important factor in your fat loss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you have any recommendations for that? Yeah, actually, I think like calories and carbs are, are a good one. One, I think it's a myth that you need carbs post-workout. I think if, um, if you're trying to lose weight, Generally, you don't need carbs post-workout, but so I go by a rule like if you're below a certain body fat percentage Then have carbs post-workout like if you're below the body fat percentage that you want to be at Then have more carbs and calories post-workout if you're and this is just like a just an easy litmus test It's nothing like super scientific, but I think it's a good little rule to sort of 
to go by. If you're above the certain body fat percentage that you want to be at, then don't have carbs post workout. Or if you do, you know, don't go for like the really new, like calorically dense carb sources post workout. You know, maybe some like strawberries or something like that would be a better would be a better thing. So that's kind of how I would tweak post workout nutrition if, if fat loss is the goal. Now, what about timing? So a lot of people say that like immediately post workout you should get in your, you know, protein shake or something like that. Is that the best thing to do or are you better off waiting a little bit? So I think there's a few different viewpoints on this and this is something that I was talking with Dr. Spencer about the other day and it's very interesting. So like if you've had protein before your workout, you're pretty much good, right? It's Cause like that protein will be carried over post-workout. You will be using that protein. So if, if you've had like protein sometime before your workout, you don't need to like have a panic attack if you're not like if you're not having a protein shake as soon as you're done working out anyways. You, don't, you certainly don't need to have a panic attack regardless about that. People freak out about their you know, pre, intra, and post-workout yeah. nutrition way more than it ultimately matters, right? Uh, fundamentally, it, it matters very little compared to how else you're eating throughout the day. Um, that said, if you know, if, um, if, you're, if you are fasting and then you're working out, you probably do want to, to have some type of meal or something you know within an hour of of working out right am i am i, am I wrong on that facebook well we got one thumbs up we got one at least one person okay. agrees right. with us so you know we're talking about rather than just looking at the workouts for ways that we can get more efficient we're looking at what are some things we can do around our workouts you know to achieve you know with this catchy term like a force multiplier right, right. so Working out in a fasted state is, is one of those force multipliers. Maybe doing some type of ke uh, ketogenic protocol could also be a force multiplier. And then maybe thinking about optimize or tweaking uh, sort of pre or post workout nutrition as well. Good? Ready to move on? I think they want to hear about the workouts. All right, let's talk about the workouts. So, if we're talking about ways to increase workout efficiency, to burn maximum calories in minimum time, there's, there's a number of really cool things that we can do. Um, and we can approach it from many different perspectives, right? So we can approach it from here's a, here's a great strength workout that you can do. Here's a great, and this is what we want to do in this episode is just give you a list of ideas. And then after this, you can just take these lists of ideas. You can, you can go use them, see what you like, uh, or sort of take whichever ones you think are going to match up well for your goals, etc. cetera. Um, so should we start maybe in, in the realm of strength training? I think so. I think that's it's always a good good place to start, mm -hmm. and I think mentally people should be starting there, in in terms of building strength. Because if if we don't start at that, um, you know, with that mindset that that strength building is a goal, mm -hmm. even for fat loss, then we can go down this rabbit hole of just you know spinning on the hamster wheel doing cardio only. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to start with the easy win. I'm going to take the easy one and then make you come up with something a little more creative. So one of my favorite complexes um, has a huge uh, caloric effect. And a complex, so by the way, complexes are like an, e an answer in, a, in and of itself. So if you want to increase workout efficiency, one thing that you can do is start to sort of string exercises together one one to another without taking any rest in between, right? So like if you just take two exercises, that's called a superset. But if you take three, four, five, maybe six exercises or more, then it becomes a complex. And the idea of a complex is that you're working multiple muscle groups and energy systems simultaneously, right? And that's what has a huge metabolic effect. And it, it creates, you know, that quote unquote metabolic afterburn, exercise post oxygen consumption. And a uh, few things will have such a high rate of return as far as burning the most amount of calories in the least amount of time as this type of training. And there's a term for this type of training. It's called metabolic conditioning. And that refers to where we are conditioning the various metabolic pathways, right? And there's, there's three of them, right? We have the very fast twitch. We have a sort of the more of the hypertrophy range, and then we have our longer endurance metabolic pathway. We don't need to get into the nitty gritties of each. Just realize that there's three of them, right? So there's a pathway that we'd use if we were like swinging a baseball bat, right? Extremely short lived, usually very explosive or or maximal type of effort. Then we have the the pathway that if we, if we're doing somewhere between you know five to twelve reps on the bench press, right? The glycolytic pathway. That's, that's that one, right? And then we have our endurance pathway, 
this would be more of our traditional aerobic, longer term endurance efforts, right? So metabolic conditioning is aimed at increasing the both uh, delivery and utilization of energy within the body, right? And we do that by tapping in and training these various metabolic pathways, you know, sometimes one after another, sometimes cycling back and forth. And it's a really powerful method of training uh, because it has such a huge metabolic and thermic effect, right? So sort of one of the, uh, I guess, brands or systems to really make this type of training very popular was CrossFit. So a lot of CrossFit is metabolic conditioning. Not all of CrossFit is. Um, I don't want to turn this into a debate on CrossFit. Uh, we could say that sometimes they do their metabolic conditioning training very intelligently, other times not so intelligently. Uh, but there's no denying that when people go to do CrossFit, they usually feel like they get a great workout, right? So maybe we can help give you some ideas of how to achieve the same type of effect, a metabolic conditioning effect, uh, but maybe do it without having to do like overhead barbell snatches, for example, right? Some, some more basic movements. Uh, Bill asks, how long for the complex and how long of a rest period? So we'll, that's good. We'll talk about that. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get into that. So one very quick example of a complex, which I'll, after we're done with this, we'll link some of the videos to the exercises we talk about and the workouts we talk about so you can actually see what they look like. Uh, this is hopefully going to be helpful um, in explaining why we're doing these things, right? So one of my favorites, which I didn't invent this, I got this from Dan John, this is my go-to, is called the Armor Building Complex. And this, I would say, is more on the strength side as far as a complex goes and even metabolic conditioning. And the, and the reason being is you're going to do three moves and the reps are going to be very low and you want the weight to be very high, right? If you don't have the weight high when you're doing this complex, you're not going to get everything out of it that you should, right? So the complex is this, it's two double cleans, one double overhead press, and if you really want to see, you can just Google Pat Flynn armor building as you're listening to this, and the video will pop right up. Three front squats, right? So you do two double cleans without putting the bells down. You do two presses, uh, sorry, one overhead press, and then three front squats. So this is this is really an intelligent, intelligently designed complex because if you're using a lot of weight, your overhead press is probably going to be the weakest lift. It should be, right? You should be able to front squat more than you overhead press. If, if it's the reverse, then you've got an imbalance, right? You really need to get your legs stronger. Um, so it would make sense that we should be able to do, you know, maybe three front squats to every one overhead press. So that's why this complex works really, really well as the reps are laid out. Uh, in such a way that your weakest move, you're doing the least number of reps, your strongest move, you're doing a few more. So you want, you do want to go really heavy with this uh, because if you're only doing three reps or something, if you really want to gain strength, you got to make sure you're probably, you, I would say use a weight for this that you can squat probably no more than five times if you really want to get the most benefit out of it. Seven rep max would be okay. Um, and of course, this is something you can cycle the weight with uh, over time. Um, now, what are some ways that we can execute this complex? Well, we could just do a few number of sets, maybe just five rounds of it, right? Just really heavy five rounds. But an even better way, I think, is, is to approach it from a sort of density perspective, right? So say you're, you've got 15 minutes to work out. Then your goal should be how many rounds can I get in 15 minutes with good form and a really good amount of weight. Now, if you're really pushing this and you're really going heavy with it, it's probably not gonna be that many rounds, but that's okay. Because then the next time you come back to that workout, let's see if we can add one more round to that. Is there anything you wanna to add to that? Mark? Yeah, I, you know, the, the density aspect of it is really important and the load aspect of it is really important. So just think about swings. If you did 10 swings, you know, gents, if you did 10 swings with a 24 kilo bell, and if you did 10 swings with a 48 kilo bell, you would immediately feel the difference between you know the the systemic stress the cardiovascular load by just changing the amount of weight so you know don't be shy so to speak in going heavy for fat loss you know of course there's a strength component to it and we always want to start there but by going heavier with these complexes you know pushing your threshold you will get more of a fat loss effect too it's not all about just doing as many reps as you can the other side of that is density you know i'm a big fan you know, especially if you work out by yourself, I work out on my own a lot, is every minute on the minute. It kind of gives you that external discipline to maintain the density. So it could be something like the armor building complex. It could be even something a little bit simpler, like double clean and press or double clean and push press for reps. So you say, 
Okay, I got a pair, pair of 24s. I'm gonna do double clean and press, double clean and push press, could be double clean and jerk for five reps or six reps, every minute on the minute. And that is a really good way. Do that for 10 minutes, 12 minutes if you can. You'll be smoked by the end of it. You'll develop a ton of strength. And yeah, you will burn some fat doing this workout. So um, I'll give a shout out to um, friend Dave Delanave here. I was just talking to him about this. He's got a really good idea for this type of training too. So you can just take one, say, complex, like clean and press. That is, a, it's two moves, but it's still a complex, right? You get that great explosive lower body movement. You get that upper body grind. And then you can alternate between just doing really, really heavy single rep sets, right? That might be your training for one day is how many single rep sets, super heavy, can I get in say 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you can try and progress that in sort of a linear fashion, right? Meaning, all right, next session, let's see if I can get at least one more set or at least two more sets or whatever, right? But at some point, you're not, you're gonna hit a wall where that doesn't work anymore. So then what you can do is you can sort of go to the other end of the spectrum and then focus more on just sheer volume, right? So you could take the same move, double clean and press, double clean and push press, etc., and, you know, lighten the load substantially and then just do much longer endurance sets and, and work on how much density can I get, right, in a certain amount of time. So just by learning to play with variables can, can really let you achieve a lot of different effects with even the same exercise, right? So the first example was that's going to really help build a tremendous amount of limit strength, the most amount of weight we can move for one rep. And that's really important because the more limit strength we have, the more efficient all of our workouts are going to become. So this is, talk, this is we were talking about force multipliers, right? A really huge force multiplier for increasing workout efficiency is making sure you are as strong as you can possibly be. And I'll just give a very simple example, right? So imagine all else equal that somebody can do a workout with uh, either 224 kilogram kettlebells or somebody can do that same workout with uh, two 16 kilogram kettlebells, right? All else equal. Just one person is stronger that they can do it with a much heavier weight than the other person. Who do you think is going to have the, the quote unquote better workout? Who's gonna burn more calories, right? Well, clearly the person working against more resistance is going to have the better workout. So even do, they're doing the same workout, just because person A is stronger and is able to use more weight for that workout, they're going to have a greater metabolic effect and they're gonna have a, you know, a quote unquote better workout. Uh, so that, what does that mean? That means you need to make sure that you, in your training, at least some of the time, you are focusing on some type of training that is absolutely uh, designated toward increasing limit strength, making you stronger in the absolute sense, the, the most amount of weight that you can use, because that's gonna carry through to everything else, right? And then, of course, that, that doesn't need to be the only thing that you do, and it shouldn't. So you can flip the um, sort of the workout on its head, and then you can say, all right, you know, I, I tested my limit strength, I really just did a bunch of, of super heavy single rep sets, now let's just do a, a, let's go for volume and density, and let's see just how many reps we can get with the, a much lighter load. So that way, and now we're working a sort of a different energy system, we're still gonna get a tremendous workout, uh, but we're, we're sort of, um, we're achieving two almost entirely different goals. But the point I want to make is that second workout, the endurance one, will be enhanced by that first workout, right? So the stronger you are in an absolute sense, the more potential you have for endurance activities. Does that make, did I explain that okay? I felt like I kind of stammered around a little bit. It made sense to like me. Like an idiot. I think, I think there's a couple other like points there idiot. though too, is the idea of, you know, if we're focusing on fat loss, we want our workouts to be efficient and effective in reaching that goal, but we want to be inefficient at the things we're doing, which is kind of this strange, you know, like mind twisting ideas. Like we want to be efficient and inefficient at the same time. But here's, here's a way of thinking about it is like, if all of your workouts are single rep strength, purely strength based workouts, you are going to be very good at lifting things up once, one time, one rep at a time, right? And over time, your returns of fat loss from doing that are gonna diminish. 
On the other side of things, if every workout you do is 10 reps, you're going to be very good at moving things 10 reps at a time. And your returns from fat loss returns from doing 10 rep sets is also going to diminish over time. So as the body adapts, we have to kind of catch up to that adaptation or our workouts rather have to catch up. So they're still taxing the body in the right way. So the nice thing about doing, you know, low rep workouts and high rep workouts is you're not allowing your body to get too ad well adapted to one thing or the other, right? The other side of that is as you're getting adapted to the 10 rep site, 10 rep set, just like you said, that, you know, I'm increasing my limit set. So I'm very efficient at doing double clean and press at 24 kilos, right? We've been doing that for five years. It's been a workout for five years. It's, it's not going to be a good fat loss hit for us, right? But if we say, okay, we're going to start doing this with 32s, yeah, we're going to get a big, big benefit, a big hit from that. The problem is you can't just go walk out to the floor and start picking up 32 bells and throwing them over your head if you're not strong enough. And that's where the single rep sets come into a huge benefit. So Chris says, um, at times when I'm super busy, I, I do just armor building for 10 to 15 minutes, four to five days a week for strength work. How do you feel about that short term? I think short term, you're going to get a lot out of that. I don't think you need to do armor building five times a week, however, at least not in the same capacity, right? So if you're going really heavy with your armor building workout, right, and you are trying to build limit strength, I think you'll get a better return, maybe only doing that somewhere between one to three times a week. And then the other days of the week, focusing on some other complex, you can still do complexes, that's fine, but on some other end of the spectrum, like Sama saw, like maybe we'll do uh, more of a complex focused on muscular endurance, right? So like my nine minute workout would be a good example. And this is, this is another good one for everybody, right? So another type of complex that will, will have a tremendous effect on calorie burn is you just take a series of exercises, right? And this, this works really, really well for kettlebells because of how you can flow from exercise to exercise without having to really switch weight around or, or any of that, is you take a series of exercises and you do them for a certain amount of time, say 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. My nine minute workout is about 30 seconds, right? So if you're doing an exercise for about 30 seconds at a time, you're, you're not going to be using the same amount of weight as you were using for the armor building complex. It's just, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to. I mean, maybe you would want to if you could, but you, you won't be you able wouldn't to. Be able, you wouldn't you be shouldn't able. be able to yeah. do the armor building complex and the nine minute workout with the same weight. Yeah. If you can, your armor building complex is probably too light. Yes. Yes, or you're failing miserably at the nine minute workout, which we don't want either. Yeah. Um, so there, like, then you just take a series of fundamental human movements and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, right? So the nine minute workout, and I'm probably gonna butcher it because I haven't done it in a while, but it's something like 30 seconds of one arm swings on the right and then the left, 30 seconds of cleans on the right and then the left, 30 seconds of snatches right, left, 30 seconds of, I think, uh, push press right and left. And it's mostly ballistics, right? Because we're trying to keep moving. We're not adding any rest between exercises. The goal is actually to do nine whole minutes worth of work without any rest in between. So at the end of that nine minutes, you're going to be completely smoked. There's going to be a ton of lactic acid buildup. Heart will have been working the whole time. The, the kidneys, the lungs, like the, the full... Uh, the, the whole system is going to be as taxed as a whole, even though you're switching between various muscle groups, if that makes sense. It's actually because we're able to switch through various muscle groups that we are able to keep the system under stress. And that's part of the power of kettlebell complexes is we are able to keep all the quote unquote metabolic processes going, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, etc., while smoking sort of individual muscle groups. And that in turn is what, what leads to that huge sort of caloric afterburn, right? So my nine minute workout would be another great example of how to burn, you know, the, the most amount of calories in the least amount of time. But the effects of that workout, or, or I would say the goal of that workout um, is, is wildly different than the goal of armor building, right? So where armor building is more focused on building absolute strength, limit strength, the nine minute workout is really more about building muscular endurance and, and lung capacity, right? So Chris, for you, I would say, you know, making sure that, that we are covering multiple ends of the spectrum 
armor building maybe somewhere between one to three times a week and then other more uh, complexes that focus more on muscular endurance and aerobic capacity and even uh, mobility would I would I would I would balance out a little bit with that um, so Leslie says sorry so you already said this how much does time of the day matter you want you want to talk about this yeah so we did talk about kind of timing your workouts around your fasting if that's something you do so for me, I'm typically having my first meal around 2 p.m. Uh, my last meal of the day is around 10 p.m. So that gives me a 16 hours of a fast. So I'll work out around noon or 1 p.m. and then eat. So it's that idea of uh, doing your, your Metcon or your strength training in a fasted state and then timing it right to get your meal after that. So now let's say that intermittent fasting isn't something that you do you do three squares a day or six meals a day then i would say you know time your meals uh kind of based on you so for me it's very difficult you know typically we teach evening classes in the gym here it would be very difficult for me to eat like eat dinner quote unquote and then go teach two hours of martial arts class of some type uh it just food just sits it's too heavy for me and i don't like teaching or working out in that condition. So if that's something that uh, affects you, then you would have to time your workouts around that. The other side of that is just kind of your natural rhythm and when you're more energetic. Some people more energetic early in the morning and that's the best time for them to work out. Some people that's mid afternoon and that's a better time. You know, and then the last part of that is, you know, your constraints, your schedule. Um, you know, if your work schedule is, hey, you gotta report to your shift at 6 a.m then early means you're working out at 4.30 in the morning. Um, conversely, if you have a more flexible schedule, then you can you can pick and choose what's better for you. Walt says hard but doable. I think he's talking about the armor building complex. Yes, yes. certainly. Yeah. Certainly hard but doable. Carl says obviously double co co complexes, double kettlebell complexes are best. What if you only have one kettlebell? So I would actually disagree with yeah. you on that, Carl, um, or at least add some context, right? So double kettlebell complexes are best for what is really the question, right? So double kettlebell complexes, and this is generally, of course, there are exceptions to this, right? As there are exceptions to just about everything. But double kettlebell complexes are, are generally going to be more useful for um, strength-based types of stuff. And, that just, and that's simply because with two kettlebells, you're, you're going to be able to get more load typically than one kettlebell yes i know you can just use one really heavy kettlebell i get that right but like double cleans for example you will be able to load more with double cleans than you will single cleans eventually so for strength and power double kettlebell complexes are generally better and maybe muscle building uh but for more on the uh capacity and muscular endurance standpoint and and mobility standpoint especially uh, because it's a lot easier to get into sort of, you know, quote unquote, uh, funkier positions and do a lot of mobility exercises with a lighter single kettlebell. Uh, single kettlebell complexes are generally more useful. So it's not that one is better than the other. It's just understanding that each, each are a tool. Double kettlebell complexes are a tool. Single kettlebell complexes are a tool. Um, I'm a tool. Sam's a tool. We are great tools. We're all tools. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the reality is you want to be doing both. You want to be doing double kettlebell complexes. You want to be doing single kettlebell complexes. And if you think about you know, just chaining together a series of kettlebell movements and the amount of reps you could do per movement, a double kettlebell complex, you might be able to go for a minute. Hey, Lisa. Um, and hitting a, a bunch of different exercises and energy pathways and muscle groups. But if you did the same series of exercises with a single, when you switch hands, you've essentially doubled it, right? So some double kettlebell complexes, you go for a minute, rest for a minute or two minutes. With a single, you could go for two minutes and rest for a minute or two minutes. So you're, you're kind of playing with the intervals a little bit and switching between single and double bells gives you that opportunity. And you're playing with you know the density of the work you're doing as well. Mm -hmm. And speaking of density sets, just to give everyone another example here, one of my favorite things to do with a single single bell is just pick an exercise that, that fancies you that day and set some number on the clock. Usually between five to 10 minutes, I wouldn't go much longer than 10 minutes for any of this. 
and just see how many reps you can do. Uh, and a great example of this is, is snatching. So snatching works really well for this. And this is how things like the five minute snatch test came about and even the 10 minute, they call it the secret service snatch test, right? So um, if you've ever done the five minute snatch test, um, you know how great of a workout that is. It, it, it's, it's hellish, it's completely hellish, especially if you do it with the, the prescribed weight. So for men, the goal is to be able to do 100 snatches in five minutes with a 24 kilogram kettlebell. That's going that is that's going to blow you up. One it's uh, even if you're pretty good at it, it's still going to blow you up. For women, a 16 kilogram kettlebell. Um, to this day, one of the the worst workouts in my life that took me forever to recover from was the 10 minute snatch test. And you have to go back like three or four years on my YouTube channel to see me do that. Um, but it was it was more than anything, it was a test of just mental fortitude because it's one of those workouts where your mind is going to want to quit. If you're assuming you're generally pretty well conditioned, your mind is going to want to quit far before your body. But this is also a good way to practice technique while still getting a certain workout. So maybe you're thinking, all right, well, you know, I need, I do need to work on snatches. So, you know, maybe I should do some, some density or accumulation sets with snatching today or push pressing or jerks or even Turkish get-ups work good for this. So the idea is a workout doesn't have to be a complex. You can still get a tremendous workout from just one exercise. And a lot of people don't think about it that way. Like you, you can have a workout that is just one exercise and that's totally fine. Another good example of that would be just my 300 swings challenge, right? So the idea is you just do 300 swings uh, pretty much as quickly as possible. The caveat is always with good form. I just don't want to be annoying and have to say that over and over. Just, just assume that I'm saying that every time. Uh, as quickly as possible with good form. You're going to have a, a, a huge workout from that. And how long is that going to take? For most people, maybe 15 minutes, right? Maybe. Is that all you should do? No, because like Sam said, when it comes to fat loss, um, and if, if we want to be efficient at fat loss, we actually want to be inefficient with our exercise. Right, meaning we don't want to keep doing something that we're really, really good at. Right, that's important for developing strength. Right, so if we want to develop strength and we want to increase movement efficiency, then then we actually don't want to have too much variety. But if we want to achieve faster fat loss, we do want a certain amount of variety, not like an arbitrary amount of variety and just total randomness, because then we're not really going to get better at anything. We're not really going to get stronger at anything. We will be burning calories, uh, but we want to work in more of a specialized variety. Um, so Steve says, uh, Carl, maybe do every minute on the, on the minute, but alternate sides if you're doing single bell work. So that, like Sam said, that would work, but you could even just double you know, two minutes, uh, whatever Sam said, I forget. Walt says, strength is the glass, fitness the water. Um, you need a big glass. So yeah, I mean, that's like, that's a great analogy is yeah. the idea is that like strength is the bucket that holds all other athletic attributes is what Walt's saying. Meaning like the bigger the bucket you have, the more potential you have for all other athletic qualities. Example, mobility, uh, flexibility, muscular endurance, uh, those types of things. But that being said, just because you have a huge bucket doesn't mean it's going to be full, right? You still have to go in and practice these other these other attributes if you want to fill that bucket up. And that's sort of what we were talking about at the beginning of, of this, what are we calling this, a lecture. What's up, Lisa? Uh, I'm currently doing German volume training. What are the benefits? Sam, you want to take this one? 10 by 10 with challenging weight. Um, so you can get a lot of fat loss benefits and some hypertrophy benefits with German volume training. I think it's tricky because the, um, the reps are so high to lift heavy. So that, that is kind of one of the arguments against it is, okay, if I got to do 10 by 10, let's say on the squat, could I have gone heavier going 10 by five, right? Yes, definitely, if you have the ability to do 10 by 10. Or is are you gonna lose density? You know, so it's 10 by 10 in how long, right? Are you doing 10 reps every minute on the minute for 10 minutes? Uh, you'll get a huge, huge hit um, in terms of fat loss that way. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think it's a great plan. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, having the discipline or some sort of external discipline to keep the weight as high as you can and 
keep the density up too. Yeah, that's what I'll say about um, GVT is that it's insane like if you're really going to do it and like i've really not known anybody who's successfully done that type of program who who kind of wasn't a pro if that makes sense with like a pros level of discipline yeah, for it yeah. because to do 10 by 10 at the appropriate amount of weight that 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 typically calls for is immensely grueling immensely grueling and it's not something you're going to be able to sustain so it really has to be a phase not like something you it's do not year, a, an operation year plan. round yeah. um and I, the other thing about 10 by 10 is like what else do you have to do mm -hmm. you know so like if you got to go train or teach two hours like this is just me personally right train or teach two hours of martial arts classes a night um you know because i enjoy and love doing that doing 10 by 10 is not really conducive to that. You're done. You're, you're if done. you're doing 10 yeah. by 10. And we have to also realize, like, we're here talking about workout efficiency, ways you can burn maximum calories in minimal time. That's not a time saver. 10 by 10 by any means is right. going to take forever. Right. It's also very much a hypertrophy program, right? So that's, like, a classic. Like, if you go on bodybuilding.com and probably in, like, the first one or two pages of the forum, somebody's going to be talking about... German volume training. There's always a rep and gonna... that ring like 10 by 10 or 8 by 8. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah, so largely it's more important to understand principles and understand why we man manipulate certain variables the way we do. So that way you can go and you can look at a 10 by 10 program and you'd be like, do I really need? Do I really need to do this? You know, is this is this really going to help me reach my? And most of the answer is no. You do not need to to be doing that amount of every because that like ten by ten is like let's just crank all the very. It's like, it's like the um what's it's the spinal tap of workout programs, yeah, right? Yeah. It's just let's crank everything up. All it's like if Eddie Van Halen with his guitar amp all the way across level eleven on everything. That's a ten by ten program. Can you tolerate that for a little bit? Yes, but it's it's not going to last. Chris says, um, so people are just hopping on. We're talking about ideas of, of burning maximum calories in minimum time. A uh, lot of great questions. Do you have, uh, before we take some more questions, do you have any other like workout ideas that, that we think some practical tips? Well, I, people I, I do? like, you know, for, for, again, we're talking about fat loss. We're talking about getting these workouts done in a relatively short amount of time. The idea of getting a couple different complexes uh, together. So, you know, you might pick one or two single bell complexes, one or two double bell complexes, another complex that is like really grind oriented and, um, you know, finish off with some sort of like loaded carry at the end or complex of loaded carries. Um, and then just go from complex to complex to complex. So you, you have a double bell complex, it's a minute long, rest a minute. Another double, it's a minute long, rest a minute. Then do a single bell complex, it's two minutes long, rest a minute to two minutes. Do another one and then, uh, you know, throw some sandbags on your shoulders and walk around for another two minutes and then you're done. And uh, you'll be trashed by the end of a workout as long as you went heavy enough. And, you know, what are, what are we talking about there? That's about 20 minutes 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, maybe. Good month. Um, yeah, and like a great single battle complex. Like when in doubt, if you just need to like pick five minute movements, big fundamental human movements, just do five reps of each, right? And go moderately heavy with it. So I'll, I'll post a link to this workout. Uh, you know, I call it like high voltage or something, but it's just five one arm swings, five clean and press, five snatches, five reverse lunges, and then like five. Um, long push press, which a long push press is a deep squat to an overhead press. So we're working pretty much all the major muscle groups, various energy systems, uh, working on both strength and muscular endurance, big fundamental human moves, nothing complicated. If you run three to five rounds of that, you're going to you're gonna get a great calorie burn and you're going to be in and out of the gym in about five minutes covered in sweat. Uh, Chris says, thanks. Some days I'll swing between sets. Some days I do 40 kilogram and other days I do 32 kilogram with swings in between sets. And yes, I love doing the nine minute workout. Try to do it once. I can never open these damn comments. Somebody sent me a message last time and said, if you click the comment, it opens it. Yeah. But I'm, am I crazy, Sam? Yeah. I'm like clicking it and it's telling me I can like, are you gonna watch like us two monkeys here like yeah. poking the screen? Uh, um, so you can't read the whole comment. Yeah, sorry, Chris. I can't see the rest of your comment, but it sounds like what you're saying is you're like waving the load or periodizing armor building. So while that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that, it seems like you're working in more endurance with swings, I would just say rather than try and periodize armor building, 
just work in some other type of complex and that's that that isn't so focused on limit strength and then you're going to get a better sort of periodized wave anyway yeah and and you know uh, again we're not exactly sure what what you're talking about here but it kind of gives me an idea and something that I do periodically is you can kind of turn your basic like power lifting movements in the complexes or you know other sorts of grinds in general in the complexes by mixing in swings so you might do a set of bench press and then 10 to 20 swings with a 32 kilo bell and then go back to bench and then back to swing so you're resting your chest muscles while you're doing the swing so to speak so you've added more work in there and really what that is is a complex right you're you, you have your two-hand swing and your bench press as a complex and just go back and forth between the two yeah I think and like we take it for granted uh, but you know not everyone knows about just just basic principles like supersets and things like that right. like just working opposing muscle groups and movement patterns back to back so you know rather than resting between an exercise can you can you pair it with a different exercise right so you keep that metabolic effect going uh, but without uh, you know fatiguing the muscle the, the, the specific yeah. muscle groups that need to be recovered in order to do a the... different non-competing exercise so it wouldn't really work to go from bench press um, to like flies or something you know mm -hmm. which which that would for like hypertrophy that's not a bad yeah type of technique but if we're just trying to get a you know like, the strategy we're talking yeah about, it's not the same Chris says, hey guys, gotta go. If any of you watchers are doubters, Pat's stuff works. He's the real deal. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. For all you doubters out there. I don't think we have too many doubters out here. We don't make enough preposterous claims. Paul says, does the fastest state not affect your workout output? Uh, so, Paul, the answer is it may at first. If, you're, if you haven't done a lot of fasting before... And this is something that I talked about in like my last three or four talks, so I don't want to hit on it too much, but this idea of metabolic flexibility, right? So if, if you have impaired metabolic, fle metabolic flexibility and you weren't that efficient at switching between fuel sources, that is burning mostly carbs for fuel and, and or fat for fuel, uh, then you may, if you just start fasting, feel a little weaker initially. <laughs> my wife's asking me, where am I? I'm at the gym. Christine, if you're watching the Facebook Live, she has a phone call in seven minutes, so I guess that means I gotta wrap this up here soon. Christine, I'm at the gym. You need to watch the kids. Yeah. All right. All right. So we're gonna. Apparently, I have to watch the kids. I'll be home in seven minutes. So let's wrap this up quickly. Hopefully, my wife is watching this. Uh, so yeah, fasting. You may feel weaker initially if you just start fasting, because you know it's gonna take a little bit of time to to sort of ad adapt to being in a fasted state. But long term whether you're doing fasting or, or ketosis, uh, you may actually feel that you have more energy and concentration for your workouts. And I talked about this last time, how part of that, and this was an article that was just in Forbes recently, which it's interesting that Forbes would talk about this, but they yeah. did, is that, you know, why is it? Why is it that when we're fasted or in ketosis that we would have more energy and concentration? And uh, I see Lisa's on here. Lisa, if you want to tell Christine that I'll be home in like five minutes, uh, that if, since she's she, she probably has, she never wants to watch. She's watch my Facebook live obviously as my wife why would she do that um, but when you're in a facet state right like from a survival standpoint right it wouldn't make sense for our body to down regulate right because if we need to go hunt and find food our body wouldn't want us to be more tired less alert uh, have less focus etc it would want the opposite right is like we, we should be more alert, more focused, have more energy and concentration, and this is what we see long term uh, if we do continue to practice fasting or, or some type of ketogenic diet is that we will see this type of response happen, and this makes sense. This is a normal, healthy, biological response, right? We're, we're on the hunt, right? And when we're on the hunt, we should be as alert and productive and energetic as possible. So that is, that is a, actually a case for it. But yes, at first it may impair your workout. Sam, any last points before uh, my wife really uh, starts, she'll, she'll start calling me here. No, I, I, I think that's a good place to end. You know, that idea of combining these two things, the intermittent fasting or the, the ketogenic diet with kettlebell complexes, not getting too stuck in a rut with any one complex and like, hey, I really love you know, uh, what would you say, the high voltage complex and doing the same yeah. thing all the time. You know, the right amount of variety is going to be very good for you. Um, 
but we don't want to be totally random either. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of balance to all of these things, right? You want to be fasting, but not undercalorized, right? You want to have variety in your workout, but not totally random. Yeah. Yeah. So Lisa says she'll send a text. You're still in the doghouse. So Lisa, I am always in the doghouse. I left a bunch of dishes out today, with like protein, you know, all over the counter and well, stuff. We found the key is to keep expectations low. That's the key for marriage. Like go in, make sure you're setting that bar really like as low as you possibly can. Um, expect expectation management is so important for everything, for fitness goals, for marriage, everything. So thank God I had Sam to advise me on that early on, as with many things. Uh, Paul says, peace out, Pat. Keep the wife happy. That's the biggest thing. You're absolutely right, Paul. Lindsay, great talk. Thank you for being on here. All right, everybody. Hey, guys. Glad to join. Thank See you. you. Next time. See you next time.